This is something that rarely happens, but the other day I was flying and I crashed my quad really hard into a hard surface and this LiPo 4 cell battery died one of its, its cells. So I do not recommend doing this of opening this LiPo battery by yourself because it can be dangerous. But if you do, just remember to use gloves, face protection and something in case of a fire. Uh, so, well, this is the process that I'm doing here. One of the cells is dead, is zero volts. So it's basically a three cell battery now, but my charger just uh, throw an error every time I try to charge it. So I need to get rid of that dead cell that is not working. So what I do here is remove all the external parts, uh, the protection. There is a hard plastic that protects the cells, uh, the walls of the cells, uh, in case of uh, something that can punch them or something that can generate like fire or anything like that. You have to be especially careful with these tapes when getting them off because uh, it's easy to use something metallic and punch one of the batteries and that can cause a fire or some kind of explosion, so be careful with that. I'm using a plastic propeller to do this. So here you can see that the output voltage is similar to a 3-cell battery. And in this graphic you can see how a battery, a LiPo battery, is laid out with all the connections and cables. So basically what we have to do is uh, locate the cell that is dead and then we are going to separate the cells but first we need to unsolder the connections you have to be very careful when disconnecting this because if you bridge uh, one connection to another you can cause a short circuit or even cause the same explosion uh, that i was saying before so i just cover all the connections with tape to be careful not to touch anything and just the connections that i want to unsolder so here I'm reading the voltage of each cell from the actual connection of the battery and to find the, the cell that is dead. After I got rid of all the cables, I used a plastic uh, blade or something, but not metallic and not sharp to separate the cells because they're glued together. I just use these uh, small scissors to cut the connections where the, the cells are put together in the terminals. So that's the only way I can use uh, scissors here. As you can see, this cell is good. The output voltage is 3.7. So that one is not the problem and here is the one that is bad and actually as you can see I damaged it a little bit with the separation process with the blade and you have to be really patient it can take up to I don't know 10 minutes or more by getting the cells separated from each other and here you can see that the voltage is zero in this cell so this is the one that we're going to get rid of and then we can see the remaining cells, this tool cell configuration that we can use for something else. So we can uh, either put these cells back together and we can do that by getting rid of the rest of the connections in the JST cable or JST connector. And just using a hot knife, we can uh, cut, it, cut it and we can use it in the balance port as normal. Here I'm checking the connections for the last time before I wrap everything up and finish the battery. And then we're done. We have a two cell battery and we have an extra one cell that I can use for other projects. Here you can see how the balance port connects really well without any problem and the battery is just fine. 
So I recommend you to use uh, balance charging or balance storage mode to balance all the cells and then you can charge the, the cells up to its maximum. But here I didn't have any problems with a balance charge. But then I realized that I don't have many applications for two cell batteries, so I realized that I can add the extra cell and make a three cell battery pack with more applications for even for my drones. So I decided to open it up again and add the extra cell that was laying around. In this graphic you can see how the connections for these LiPo batteries are and it is really easy. It's just a positive and negative terminal and then you can connect uh, a cable from each of these connections to the balance board. We have to be careful while soldering not to touch the other terminals. So I use the electrical tape again to cover uh, the other terminals that I'm not working on and also put enough solder tin to make it really strong and also that way the cables or the connections will handle a lot more amps and everything will be all right. So that was it. I'm putting the battery back together again and I'll put that plastic back again to protect the battery from punches or anything that can cause an accident or something like that. So then it was time to charge the battery, but I had a problem with that because one of the cells was really low. What I do recommend is putting the storage mode in your battery so it will balance all the cells to 3.85 volts each and then you can balance charge your battery as normal. It shouldn't be a problem if your battery have a normal use. So now it's time to test the battery. As you can see, I put a little sticker with my logo and also the capacity, so I cannot forget the capacity of this battery. So we have to identify the battery. So what I did for this test is just normal flying and few punch outs. And also what I noticed after is that one of the, of the cells was more discharger than the others. So that means that maybe uh, the connections are not uh, well done. So that way the current goes faster from that cell than the other cells and that's why it is not discharging balanced. But it is okay, it is not a big problem because after that we can charge the battery again in balanced mode and it won't be a problem. I tested the battery again in another of my quadcopters, this one is homemade. By the way, if you want to see the video on how I made this drone, you can click on the link that you see on the screen. This flight was not demanding for the battery, it was just hovering and going back and forth. And I was able to go up to 10 minutes and more than that. Unfortunately, I crashed and I had to stop the tests, but when I had the chance to see the numbers in the charger, I could see that the battery had enough charge to fly for another three or five minutes maybe, which is okay, it's really good. So uh, I think this battery is working really well, even though it had a crash and I had to repair it. So it was a good investment of my time to repair this battery. I hope you learned today something with this. Uh, remember to be really careful with these LiPo batteries because they can be really explosive. If you like this video, please share it and like it. And if you didn't like it, tell me why and I will do better next time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.